So let's look at our first example. Our first example is the log of x squared is equal to 2. Okay, we're going to solve for x, obviously. We have the word solve involved in what we're looking for x. Uh, and notice that it says and check. Now, and check is always a good idea anyways. Uh, and it's particularly useful when we're solving these uh, exponential and logarithmic equations because sometimes, like we found with our square root functions, um, sometimes we uh, our solutions don't always work out like we would want them to. Okay, so uh, when we're solving logarithmic functions, typically the key is to write it in exponential form. Okay, so what is the base of the logarithm when there is no base written? Ten. Okay, it is base 10, so, okay, there we go. So to write it in exponential form, remember, we've got to go back a little bit to remember that. We've got to do the, the swoop, as I call it. Okay, the base, the 2 becomes the exponent, and x squared is what we are equal to. Okay, well, if 10 squared is equal to x squared, what must, um, well actually, hang on, let, let, me, let me work it out, okay, I almost forgot a solution. 10 squared is 100. What's the opposite of squaring something? Taking the square root, what must we remember when we take the square root? Positive and negative, must remember the positive and the negative, okay, there are two solutions to this problem, okay? You can check it in your calculator using your log button, okay? Uh, log of 10 squared is 2. Thank you very much, ma'am. The log of 10 squared is 2. Uh, the log of, if you square a negative number, you must put it in parentheses, okay? So you got to throw an extra set of parentheses in there. The log of negative 10 squared is also 2. All right. So let's keep moving. Log base 7 of 3 minus x is equal to negative 1. Log base 7 of 3 minus x is equal to negative 1. We've got to write it in exponential form. So the base is 7, negative 1 becomes the exponent, and that is equal to 3 minus x. Well, we just reviewed our negative exponent rules. What do we do when something has a negative exponent? We move it to the denominator. Okay, that 7 to the negative 1 is not negative 7. It's 1 over 7. You have a choice here when you're solving. Um, you can either subtract the 3 and your x is going to be negative, or you can move the x and then subtract the 1 7th. You're going to have to technically do two steps either way, so I'm going to make my x positive by moving it to the other side. Usually don't do that, but you can. Just try to avoid it if possible. So that's x plus 1 7th is equal to 3, then subtract the 1 7th from both sides. Uh, 3 can be expressed as 21 over 7, so 21 minus 1, that would be 20 over 7. And yes, I want your answer in uh, fractional form. Okay, I don't want that nasty decimal. Uh, remember, if you're checking this, since the base is different, okay, if you don't have one of the calculators that does uh, allow you to change the base, then you've got to type it in as the log of the big part, 3 minus 20 over 7, divided by the log of the base. And that should give you negative 1. Another example, let's look at a natural log. The natural log of 8x is equal to 4. 
What is the base of the natural log? E. E is the base of the natural log. So when we write this in exponential form, it's going to be e to the fourth is equal to 8x. Now, when you've got problems like this, you need to uh, leave it, okay? Because e is a non-terminating decimal, and raising that to the fourth power is just going to give you a nasty number. So just leave it as e to the fourth and continue to solve for x by dividing by 8. And that's how you're going to write your answer. e to the fourth over 8 is equal to x. And you can very easily check that. The natural log of 8 times, put your answer in parentheses just to be on the safe side, e to the fourth. Close that parentheses right there because that's for the exponent of e. Divided by 8, close your parentheses for the log, and we get 4. Let's look at some exponential equations. We have 20 times 1 half is our base and our exponent is x over 3. 1 half is our base and our exponent is x over 3. And that is equal to... Okay, so we need to start by isolating the exponential expression. Okay, we've got to get the one half by itself, so we need to begin by dividing by 20, both sides. So we are left with one half to the x over 3 is equal to 5 over 20 is 1 fourth. Now, anytime you're solving an exponential equation, at this point, when you have an exponential on, the, on one side and a number on the other side, you should attempt to write this number over here so that it has the same base as your exponential. Okay. Y'all see that one and a half and one fourth are kind of related to each other? Okay, two squared is four. So we can rewrite one fourth as one half squared. Okay, we can rewrite one fourth as one half squared. Because when you raise a fraction to an exponent, you raise the top to the exponent and the bottom to the exponent. So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. 1 half squared is 1 fourth. Now, since we have the same base, the only way that this expression, this equation right here can be true since they have the same base is if their exponents are equal to each other. So at this point, our bases can kind of disappear, so to speak, because the only way that equation is going to be true is if their exponents are equal. So we've got x over 3 is equal to 2, and then we just solve that for x by multiplying both sides by 3. So our answer is 6. And again, very, very easy. It's an equation. All you got to do is go back to the very original and plug it in. No, just the, the you're solving for x. Yeah, you're solving for x. So you get the x equal six. Plug it back in. Just be sure when you plug it back in that you put your exponent in parentheses. Anytime there's more than one number in your exponent, you need to put it in parentheses. That way it will not give you the correct answer. Check that. Like this, 12 times 6 
plus 2 is equal to 1 third. 12 times 6 to the x plus 2 is equal to 1 third. x plus 2 is the exponent there. So again, we need to start by isolating our exponential expression. We need to isolate the 6 to x plus 2. So we need to start by dividing by 12. Okay. Or, since there's a fraction on the other side, let's look at it this way. Instead of dividing by 12, let's multiply by the reciprocal. Let's multiply by 1 over 12. Okay, It's the same thing. Dividing by 12 is the same as uh, multiplying by 1 over 12. The reason why I did that was because I had a fraction on the other side. I really don't want to have to divide a fraction by a number. I mean, yeah, you can do it on your calculator, but... You're trying to avoid that. It makes it easier to look at it this way. So 1 third times 1 twelfth. We multiply straight across the top. 1 times 1 is 1. Multiply straight across the bottom. 3 times 12 is 36. Okay, so we want to try and express the right side so that it has the same base as the exponential on the left side. Well, we know that 6 and 36 are related exponentially, correct? Right? What's the relationship between 6 and 36 involving the exponent? 6 squared is 36. Okay, well, there's a little bit of a problem. It's not equal to 36. 36 is in the denominator. So what else can we add to that relationship so that 36 is in the denominator? Negative. Okay, we can express... 36, 1 over 36 as 6 to the negative 2 power. Because the negative would move it to the denominator, and then 6 squared is 36. So now we have the same base. All we need to do is set our exponents equal to each other and solve. So negative 2 <coughs> minus 2 is negative 4. Check it really quick, because there's absolutely no reason not to. 12 times 6 raised to the negative 4 plus 2. Make sure you put it in parentheses. <coughs> 0 0.3 repeating is 1 third. Uh, now let me show you what your answer would be if you had left off the parentheses. Clearly not the right answer, okay? Because if you don't put in the parentheses, what the calculator reads that as it does order operations, so it approaches parentheses first. Well, there are no parentheses, so what comes after parentheses? Exponents. All it considers to be in the exponent is the negative fourth, so it raises 6 to the negative fourth. What comes after exponents? Multiplication and division, so it multiplies that by 12, and then finally you've got addition on the very end. Okay, that's why it gives you the wrong answer. You've got to put those parentheses in there for it to calculate. All right. Okay, let's look at an example here where we need to condense some logarithms before we can solve. We've got the natural log of 3x minus 2 plus the natural log of x minus 1 is equal to 2 natural log of 